Welcome to Lecture 1 on the topic and introduction to food production in a changing world. This lecture is part of the subject Food Production in a Changing World, which is a component of the Bachelor of Agriculture and Technology, a degree that is offered at both North Melbourne Institute of TAFE and Melbourne Polytechnic. Please visit our website at www.nmit.edu.au for further information on this course and other courses that we offer. This subject is taught by both Dr. Doug Rao and myself, Dr. Nikki Cooley. In Lecture 1 today, I'll be giving an overview of the subject, the subject aims and descriptions, the student learning outcomes, the modes of delivery that we offer, some descriptions, and I'd like you to think about one of the assessments starting from today, referencing, support the statement that you make, how important this will be through this subject, resources, what you will need to obtain to complete this subject successfully, and staff contact and details for your convenience. This subject explores human food production, its current and future challenges from both the Australian and the global perspectives. Students will develop a comprehensive understanding of the evolution of human food production and the key factors driving change in food production systems. Contemporary food production drivers such as global population dynamics, advances in knowledge and technology and globalisations of markets will be explored among other topics in this subject. Issues of change and, st and sustainability in global food production systems will also be studied and we will consider concepts such as population growth, food security, climate change, agro-ecosystem resilience. The practical outcomes of these concepts will be explored at both local and global contexts. In this subject, four student learning outcomes will be covered. Describe and explain the historical evolution of food production and the key factors driving change in food production systems. The second is to research and discuss drivers of change of <laughs> contemporary food production systems, including global population dynamics, advances in knowledge, knowledge and technology, and globalisation of markets. Number three will enable investigation into the issues of change and sustainability in global food production systems. This includes, most importantly, population growth, food security, climate change impacts and agro-ecosystem resilience. And the final student learning outcome for this subject is to be able to describe the Australian perspective in the face of changing global food production mechanisms. There are two modes of delivery in this subject and it is up to you to choose which you would prefer. <coughs> student learning outcomes will be taught by selections of delivery modes Facts and theories will be communicated via lectures. Lectures will take two formats of which either delivery method can be selected. There will be face-to-face -face lectures which will occur on Thursday mornings in Building L at the Epping campus. Most of the lectures will be recorded for you and available through Moodle to the Flexible Delivery cohort. Lectures delivered through the Flexible Delivery will be either via a YouTube link or by a voice recording accompanied with lecture notes and handouts with information. Tutorials will reinforce key, key subject concepts covered in the lectures. These will be delivered via two modes. The first mode will be where the student will need to complete a number of tasks or student-directed research. The student is responsible for their own timetabling of these activities. We will, not be um, we will not conduct timetable face-to-face -face or online tutorials. These frameworks of these activities will be communicated on Moodle. The outcomes of the task or research findings will be discussed in a virtual classroom where appropriate. Please note all students will be encouraged to attend any virtual classrooms that are um, timetabled. <coughs> In this subject, regardless of what mode of delivery you choose, you will find that there is a high self-directed learning on research activities. That is, research will be conducted by students and these will be used to support the assessment and the task for this subject. 
And finally, um, this subject will be accompanied by some reading or literature. This literature will be a selection of textbook chapters, journal articles, and agricultural industry papers and articles where appropriate. Assessments, how do you pass this subject? Well, there are four assessment categories to complete to pass this subject. Please note, there is no exam. There will be a number of online quizzes that will be worth 20%, a case study assessment, which is a 1,500 word case study, which will be due in week six on the 28th of August, which is worth 25%. You will be expected to conduct a reflective journal throughout this subject. This assessment is worth 2,000 words and is worth 35%. This will be due in week 11, the 9th of October. You will be given some guidance in the first few weeks about your reflective journal. The first tutorial, for example, will help you construct components of this. And finally, there is an online team debate. You must be able to access the internet in week 12 on the 16th of October. If you live or work in an area where internet access is unreliable, we would ask that you find a location on that day where internet access is reliable. You will need to do some preparation for this online team debate, which will occur in week 11. Please allow adequate timetabling, as you will be responsible for organising both yourself's time and your team's time. This is worth 20% and is a group assessment. All assessment information will be available on Moodle. This subject will be taught in accordance to scientific principles and will be evidence-based. You must take this on board. All assessments throughout this subject will require evidence for any statement you make or any fact you make. Students really struggle with this and they lose marks unnecessarily, so please listen closely. All students will be required to use both in-text referencing and a reference section for each, each assessment. As I said, failure to do so will result in a deduction of marks. There is a correct way and many incorrect ways to reference facts and statements. I have spent some time in this lecture giving you some examples. Rule number one, if you make a statement, present a fact or repeat information, you must support this with one, an in-text reference, and two, the full literature at the end of your assessment. Rule number two, you must do this with every single statement, sentence, reference you make. Therefore, your work theoretically should be scattered with references. It's not adequate enough to put one reference at the end of a paragraph, even if that re reference does pertain to every single statement in that paragraph. It is pure laziness on the writer's behalf, and you leave, all the, read you leave the reader of the work to do to make that leap. It is very important that you support a cl any claim that you make with a reference. Too often in modern day society, we don't understand where the information that we have comes from. If you're making important agricultural decisions and you don't understand where the references come from, then how do you know that the reference is indeed accurate and correct? This is hard work, students. It will take you more time and you will find it frustrating but it is a, a component of the scientific discipline that you need to get on board with. If you're on board with it, it will make not only your studies here easier, but it will also aid you in every aspect of your life. I've given you an example of how referencing can work successfully. In this example, the following text, which is in italics, has been directly copied from a textbook. <clears throat> you want to use this statement in your assessment. You need to write this in your own words and put a text reference to support the statement. For example, the literature states not many um, corporations on earth, proce earth processes the financial resources and the technical capabilities to deliver tonnages of pepperoni tailored to the demands of Domino's pizzas. You may rewrite as one driver of food production is a provider's capabilities 
This is evidence in the case of the suppliers of Domino's pizzas, where considerable financial resources and technical capabilities are required. You see I have written the author's surname and the year after this. If there is more than one author, you put the author's surname and then the ita 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 abbreviated italics et l e t space a l dot. This is how you correctly in-text reference. To complete your accurate referencing, you will need to then include a reference section at the end of your assessment where you list the full reference. For example, you make sure you list the author or the, all of the authors or editors in a book, the year, the title, the journal name, page number and um, journal number, or you, t you put the publisher's detail. You have to ensure that the references that you use are also credible, credi <laughs> are credible, that is that they are references that you can and should be using in your text. A statement off a blog, for example, or Wikipedia where they're not peer-reviewed isn't always a very good reference to support your statements. Where possible, you need to source all information from the original source. For example, the reference I've given on the screen is a link to a nature paper. Don't put in the URL link. Please put in the details of the author and the paper. It is the author that has written the paper, and the URL is just a way of finding this information. Please refer to the student subject outline. This has many pieces of information that are essential to your successful study of this subject, including rubrics where, where applicable for the assessments. They will give you guidelines for marks to be gained and where marks will be lost. Literature associated with this subject can come as either recommended or essential. Where literature is provided as essential, you must read its contents as it's a requirement for knowledge in this subject. Where it is recommended, it either may help you in understanding a particular topic or take your, the, the depth of knowledge in this topic further. You will need internet access to complete this subject and a download, a download capacity that enables you to either watch YouTube videos if you're uh, learning this via the flexible delivery mode and or download PDFs from the Moodle site where required. Now this bit of information is absolutely essential. You need to check regularly on Moodle. All subject communications will occur via Moodle website. I don't accept it as an excuse once you're on the site that you didn't get the information because you didn't go into Moodle regularly. It is your responsibility to check both Moodle and your NMIT emails. If you set up a forwarding personal email address on Moodle, which you can do by the way, then if that address becomes corrupted or messages aren't forwarded through technical issues, which unfortunately does occur periodically, the lack of information is still your responsibility. So therefore, just maybe once a week, touch base with Moodle and just check that you're getting all the information that you require to complete this subject. You will need to be available for the team debate workshop assessment in week 11 where the preparation is occurring and week 12 where you'll need internet access. This, pres this assessment is split into two. The group part will require the group to write about a 300 word case either for or against a topic you will be given. Your case must be on Moodle by 9pm Wednesday the 15th of October. It is your responsibility to organise your group and your time components into this. Each group mo member must submit one rebuttal maximum 100 words. So this second half of the assessment is individual. That is, you have to respond to one, one uh, rebuttal. With respect to the rebuttal, rebuttal that will be occurring on Thursday the 16th of October. Therefore, it is essential that you have internet access for about an hour, maybe two, between 9am and 9pm. If you live in an area where internet is unreliable, then you need to find a location where that is not the case. So let me reiterate, there are two parts of the assessment. One part is that you work with the group to put an assessment together and the second part is that you
is that you um, sorry <laughs> is that you have to respond individually it is a subject requirement for you to timetable access to Moodle on the 16th of October. The subject coordinator for this subject is Dr. Doug Rao. He prefers email communication, but you may also find him on the phone number 92691166. My name is Dr. Nikki Cooley. I too prefer email communication and my email address is on the slide. I can also be contacted on 92691692 if I'm not in the office, please leave a message. I hope you enjoy learning about food production in a changing world. This brings us to the end of this lecture.